Our world lead brings us to Ukraine now. The fight in the city with Europe's largest nuclear power plant, Zaporizhia, is intensifying, according to Ukrainian officials there. They say Russian cluster shells injured eight civilians in a village nearby. Three were ambulance workers who had responded to the scene. In a predictable refrain, Russia claims it was targeting deployment points for Ukraine's military. Meanwhile, northeast of Zaporizhia, Ukraine says it's clawed back significant ground in Bakhmut. CNN's Nick Robertson spoke to Ukrainian commanders on the ground who want to set the record straight on which Russian troops retreated first. At the vanguard of Ukraine's most successful offensive in months, elite soldiers storm out of their US-made M113 troop carrier near Bakhmut. Over the following three days, they would take back close to two miles of eastern Ukrainian territory from Russian troops. Their commander explains, dry ground, new U.S. attack vehicles helping reverse months of losses. Everything was planned and calculated, and we had an advantage because we used armored vehicles. This time, the weather gave us a chance to use all our might and show what we're capable of. Yevgeny Prigozhin is saying the reason you took territory is because the Russian forces ran away. Prigozhin is a liar because the first to flee were Wagner. It is his units that fled. And our success is not due to the fact that they fled, but the fact that we conducted a planned assault by circumventing and cutting them off. Actually, the unit he is badmouthing fought to the end. His Wagners were the first to flee. Cleaned up and back from the battle, three young troop commanders recall the first moments. You are nervous. You feel the shivers, Oles says. Every sound scares you, especially the whistle of a mortar shell. With their success, losses too. It is always painful and hard to lose, Bars says. But it doesn't stop us. It makes us angrier, tougher, and gives us motivation to go all the way and not stop. Each of them knows more battles to come. After each fight, morale goes up, then down, then up again, Judo says. You have to motivate them somehow. And this last battle, not done when the Russians were pushed back. They regrouped, rushing in reinforcements. Not for the first time in the days long fight, US made weapons making a decisive difference. This time, HIMARS precision rockets. Their reserves were too far away, and this allowed us to destroy the enemy even as we approached them. We used unmanned aerial vehicles to see where they were concentrated, which enabled us to use a Hamars for a precision strike. His battalion estimate in their sector of the fight two to three hundred Russian soldiers killed, but he is quick to acknowledge those soldiers' strengths and says Prigozhin is wrong to discount the Russian army. So their offensive was so successful. In the hours of this morning, another attack was launched around Bakhmut. Now, commanders aren't saying how successful this part of the offensive is being. And interestingly, they're not saying whether or not it's connected with the big expected counteroffensive. But significantly on that, Russia's defense ministry is saying we're not losing any ground around Bakhmut at the moment. And that's unusual for them to come out publicly and say that. Jake. All right, Nick Robertson in eastern Ukraine for us. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, brash Russian warlord and Wagner army chief Yevgeny Prigozhin says Ukraine's counteroffensive is already in full swing. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says his country needs, quote, a bit more time to launch its counteroffensive while it waits for more Western aid to ar arrive. Ukraine has gotten a new major delivery, Britain's modern long-range stealth cruise missiles capable of striking deep into Russian-held occupied territory which CNN's Jim Shudo was first to report. As Ukrainian forces prepare to launch a massive new counteroffensive, they now have a deadly new weapon in their arsenal. CNN exclusively first reported that Britain has delivered to Ukraine its advanced Storm Shadow cruise missiles, the kind of long-range capability Kyiv has long been pleading for. The donation of these weapon systems gives Ukraine the best chance to defend themselves against Russia's continued brutality. The storm shadow gives Ukrainian forces the ability to strike deep behind Russian lines. A Western official called it a proportionate response to Russia's targeting of civilian infrastructure. 
However, Ukrainian forces have pledged to fire the missiles only inside Ukrainian sovereign territory, not to attack Russia itself. While the U.S. has so far refused to provide Ukraine with long-range missiles, such as the Atakums, for fear of sparking Russian retaliation, the U.K. has been more forward-leaning with its weapon supplies. In recent months, the U.K. provided modern Western Challenger II tanks before the U.S. decided to supply its own Abrams tanks. The Storm Shadow is a cruise missile, typically launched from the air with stealth capabilities. It has a range in excess of 155 miles, three times the range of U.S.-provided missiles. The Storm Shadow's capabilities are really complementary to what the Ukrainians are planning to do with their spring offensive. It's able to use video imagery to target actual uh, areas that they're going after. Still, the U.S. Secretary of State has said that Ukraine already has what it needs to be successful. My own estimation is that uh, they um, have in place across all of those dimensions uh, what they need to continue to be successful in regaining territory that was seized by force by Russia over the last 14 months. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, on the other hand, has said his country is not quite ready, saying he is still waiting for aid already promised. We're expecting armored vehicles. They arrive in batches. We can advance with what we've got, and I think we can be successful. But we will lose a lot of people. I think that is unacceptable. We need to wait. As I mentioned, Ukraine has pledged to only use these new cruise missiles inside Ukrainian sovereign territory, that is, not to strike Russia. We should note, Jake, that from the British point of view, Crimea is very much uh, an open target here. They consider that illegally annexed by Russia, and that's strategically important because these missiles potentially put at risk some of Russia's most prized military possessions, the Black Sea Fleet, uh, the, the entire Crimea port, that could be a, a real game changer going forward as Ukraine plans this counteroffensive. Yeah. Now, we could mark this day as a, as a day when decisions were made that really changed things for, mm. for better or for worse. We don't know. Yeah. Tim Shudo, thanks so much.